this is Tanai and today's video is about how to make your sound as great as possible when playing in a concert hall. I'm currently on tour in Japan and I just played a recital in Tokyo and I'm gonna use some clips of that recital a couple of days ago to demonstrate a couple of things that I always look out for when playing in a concert hall and that I think can really help you improve your sound when you're playing in a hall. There always is a difference playing in your living room, in your apartment, in a practice studio, at a school or at a university and playing in an actual concert hall that seats 400 to, if you're playing in a big hall, two and a half thousand people. There definitely are things to look out for when you are in a performance venue as opposed to at home and this is what we're going to be talking about today. So to start off, one thing that I always try to imagine when I'm having the rehearsal in the hall is I try to detach my ears and imagine that I'm putting them in the back of the hall. This might sound a little bit strange, but actually this will change your sound. I basically try to imagine that I'm one of the listeners listening to the sound that I produce. This immediately, of course, makes me think about projection, about reaching the very last seat in the back of the hall and playing for the entire audience. What this might do is maybe change the way you play a piano. Maybe this will turn into some kind of a mezzo piano. It will just help you imagine that you're playing for this big audience and not just for yourself. Projection is a very big subject when you're playing in a hall. In particular, I would say to always think of the higher register, whether that is your third, fourth and fifth finger when you're playing intervals or the melody, to really activate those muscles so that they can project the melody until the very last seat of the hall. Always remember that you're not just playing for yourself and don't be completely within your world, but always remember you are playing for many, many people. There is one story that I would like to tell, very fitting to this thought of projection, is that in ancient Roman times, when people would play in the theater, actors, they would wear masks that covered their entire face. So it wouldn't just be here, but the mask would cover the entire face. And a good actor would be somebody that could project through the mask with his voice and reach the audience in the entire theater. So basically someone that was just mumbling and whispering and the sound stayed within the mask wasn't as impressive as someone that could actually project his voice to transcend the mask and reach everyone in the audience. And thankfully we as musicians and pianists are not wearing any masks or our instrument is not covered in any way but this thought might be something that could help you to really transcend everything and reach the audience another important thought is to not use too much left pedal this is something that i always try to remind myself of also when i'm practicing but when you are playing in a big hall this becomes very apparent especially in a big hall that has great acoustics, the left pedal should not be used to change the dynamics. So if you are trying to create a very pianissimo special moment, don't do that by just putting the left foot on the pedal. Try to do that just by using your fingers. And the left pedal, try to reserve that for when you actually want to change the color and create a different sound color because a big hole really allows for those very very slight changes and it will be so special if you use the left pedal to change the color and do all the dynamic changes in the piano register with your fingers
Now I've talked a lot about that you have to project and that you have to make sure that you're transcending the mask. However, a big hall with a good acoustic also really allows for you to go into the extreme. So when you are rehearsing in the hall before the concert, I would definitely recommend checking the extremes. Check the very loud passages, the fortissimo, how loud can it be without you know, banging and sounding too harsh, but also check the very low extremes, the pianissimo, the triple Ps, because if you have an amazing hall, you can really make some magic there and go into the very extreme and just barely, barely touch the keys and something incredible is going to come out. So check what the hall allows for in terms of extremes, piano as well as forte. My next point is connected to the very first thing that I said, where I mentioned activating the upper fingers of your right hand, especially the upper register. When you're playing in a big hall, usually you will be playing on a big grand piano, a Steinway D or something different, but a big grand piano. And the basses are always very strong. I don't know what kind of piano you have at home, but most likely you won't have a concert grand at home that is as long and as big as a piano on stage will be. So at least for me, that is the case. I have a, a grand piano at home, but it is a smaller one. Um, so when I am playing on the concert grand piano, which very often is a Steinway D, for example, the basses, of course, are very powerful. And I always remind myself to check the basses so that they don't cover the entire sound that I'm creating in that moment. So if I have chords, of course there should be a warm bass, that is the foundation of your sound, but it shouldn't cover up the melody and what you're doing in the right hand. So try to find a good balance between upper register and basses. Usually I would say the basses are there already and what you have to take care of is the middle and upper register to really come out and project into the hall. Again, when you're playing on a big concert piano, one of the dangers is that your sound can get very harsh because the power behind that piano is huge. So when I'm in a big hall playing on a, on a big concert grand, I always try to make sure that my sound doesn't get too harsh. A great tip for that is to not press the key from above. So if you have a very loud passage or a very loud chord, for example, don't start here and then just let your hands fall on the keys and that way create a, a loud sound, but try to start right at the key and then just use a very quick speed to press it. That will also create a loud sound, but it will preserve that warmth that you will be looking for. So always make sure that your sound stays warm, that you don't press the keys from above and just fall on them, but try to keep the hands close to the keys and press the key from there directly and just very quickly and that way you're going to create a warm sound. I don't know if that makes any sense but I try to avoid this movement and then staying and try to think more of it as I start right where the keys are and then it's more a movement going upwards so that sound goes upwards and expands into the hall. topic when in a concert hall is pedaling. Pedaling should be something that is very flexible so I would avoid practicing one pedaling system for that piece and then really having to stick to it at any cost because pedaling is something that should be flexible according to the room and the hall that you're playing in. So for example if you're playing in a church where many concerts take place usually churches can be pretty echoey and if it is extremely echoey I would definitely try to reduce the amount of pedal that I'm putting into the piece. Um, on the other hand if it is very dry you could use a little more pedal so try to adjust the pedal to the acoustic that you have in a hall. Of course the better the acoustic is, the more you can do. But yeah, very often it is a little echoey or a little dry. So 
try to adjust it accordingly. Also, if a hall is a little echoey, you might think about reducing the tempo just a tiny bit, because if you have a very fast piece, for example, with many, many little notes in a passage and the echo is really strong, then people will not even be able to hear the single notes anymore. So in general, if it's an echoey hall, I would always remind myself to definitely not rush and maybe even take a slightly slower tempo. Obviously, don't change the character of the piece, but just in order to give the audience the opportunity to really hear every single note. And one last important thing is to keep in mind that the acoustics actually do change when the audience is in the hall because the human body absorbs sound. So when you have 400 people or two and a half thousand people sitting in the hall, the sound definitely changes and the people absorb some of the sound. So usually it gets less echoey, but sometimes also some strange things happen and the sound just changes into different directions. So of course, when you're rehearsing in the hall, you can never have the exact sound that you're going to have in the concert. The situation will always change a little bit, but for sure you can anticipate that the audience is going to absorb some of the sound so you can already keep that in mind when thinking about what kind of pedaling you want to do and what kind of tempo you want to use and all those points that I mentioned before. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any other things that you always think about when you rehearse right before a concert in the hall or any methods that help you create a great sound in a big room, in a church, in a concert hall. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.